Yeah, hello and welcome to Kimber Bushcraft. Uh, 
Today you can see I'm in my Kimber camp and uh, actually Cornelius is with me but is uh, uh, checking the area out here for uh, foxes and so on. So he'll be back in a, in a short while. But uh, yeah, um, as you can see in the title, I got a new bushcraft knife and it's from a company called Beavercraft. And uh, yeah, I'm going to make a review of that today. So, um, and test it out, see if it's something I will use. It looks awesome, so I'm very excited to, to try it out and see how good it performs. And uh, yeah, you saw I put up my fire. It's only to make a little bit of uh, warmth out here. It's a cold day out here in Kemper Camp, and uh, I'm going to make my coffee on this little sphere stove. It's a long time since I've used this, so uh, yeah, I think it's time. And uh, probably many of you haven't seen this little awesome stove uh, that I got. It's made in Sweden and uh, yeah, it's very uh, efficient and I love using it. So, um, and uh, I don't prepare any food today. I have something special I would like to show you. Something very international uh, and I'll explain that uh, a little bit later. And I got some dried um, meat for Cornelius and of course some water for him and coffee for me. So I think it's going to be a nice day out here. Uh, I don't think it's going to be a, a long video, uh, just a short video and that's okay too. Uh, this is one in between my uh, ordinary videos. So I hope you enjoy that and thank you for joining me again or us again in uh, Kimba Camp. Yeah, and uh, my little swear stove, you can see here how it looks inside. Uh, on here, I have a little wick that I use uh, for priming. I'll show you how. I open to the container, if there's enough, perhaps a little bit more. And then in here, I made this. It's actually a little flask, but I put some signs on so I don't confuse it with or think it's alcohol I can drink. So, yeah. And then I take this one and take some fuel up, put this on again. And then I prime it here. Yeah. Let's see if I can light it with a spark. Yes, I can. Then I can put this one on again. And now I have to wait until um, the tubes that are pressing the, the fuel up, it's uh, white gas, it's called, and then I can turn this on and then it will start. I have to wait until it's almost died out and sometime uh, it dies out before I, I get the chance to start it, but then I just use again my fair rods. The only disadvantage with this is it's very noisy. Yeah, here we go. And I can put the over, the water over and uh, put in my coffee. But it's a great little stove and uh, it can be used in high altitude as well. I have uh, read that it's also been used on uh, Mount Everest because a lot of gas, uh, propane gas, you can't use in high places, in high altitudes and in cold weather. But this one will run on any conditions. Yeah. I think this will be enough. A little bit of salt in. 
and it will remove the bitterness from the coffee. It sounds a little bit uh, wrong, but it's because it's not heated up enough yet. So uh, in a minute or so, it will hopefully work perfectly. And as you both can hear and see, it's running perfectly now. Uh, very efficient. And I can lower it a little bit if I want to, so it won't be that noisy. And um, I'm not in a hurry to make coffee, so just let it stand here and uh, make it slow coffee. Boiling. Yeah, and let it rest for a minute or so. Then I prepare my coffee. I got my cookser, and I got my special thing here. So yeah. Oh yeah. No, no, don't steal my firewood. He's doing it again. A little bandit. Does it look guilty? No, not at all. Is it good, Cornelius? Is it? Yeah. More meat? Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, can I just? I think so. But it's smoked meat, so he can't. It's not good for him. Too much. So this will be the the rest. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit for me. Hmm? Then the thing I want to show you, the, the international thing. Hang on, I put you a little bit closer. Just make a little cloth, and then it is this little thing. Now <laughs> it's not for you, can you just? Yeah. I know that uh, these kind of breads are called Danish uh, abroad, especially in America. Uh, they have all kind of shapes and uh, tastes, but. This is a very traditional Danish uh, uh, cake that we eat uh, for breakfast together with some bread. And the funny thing is, this is called Danish, but in Danish we call this Wienerbrød, which means bread from Vienna in Austria. So I think that's a little bit funny. And uh, uh, more funny is that this is called a Spandauer, and uh, that's a German word. So. It's a German cake from Vienna called Danish. <laughs> I think that's a little bit funny. And it tastes good. And I'm going to eat it together with my coffee. Mm.
And now we are almost coming to the point where I'm going to tell you about the knife and uh, make a review of it, test it out and so on. For you, my little friend. No more meat for you. Nope. Mm. Yeah. And here it is my new bushcraft knife. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm crazy about the leather sheet. I like I like that. It's not glossy, but matte. All you you all know I like matte leather. And the knife here. And uh, yeah, I put a link uh, to Amazon where you can uh, read about the specs. But um, I can say it's carbon steel, high carbon steel, uh, 1066, and it's uh, blued here. You can see like gun blue uh, or gun black. Uh, I like to uh, make that myself with my uh, steel and uh, that's why I th think this is just a bushcraft knife for me. I like it a lot yeah. and uh, the handle I also like that it's walnut and of course it's full tang and uh, I can use this also as a scraper. So it's uh, 9 degrees spine here. Yeah, I seldom use that because I think uh, it's going to mark the blade, but you can use it if you want to. So uh, yeah, now I'm going to test it out, try some different techniques and uh, yeah. But first, I brought a little piece of paper. So uh, let's see how it performs. Yeah. I make some uh, pros and cons about this knife in the last of this video, so you have something to think about if it's something for you. Yeah. I would like to point out I'm not an expert in knives at all, so uh, this is just my opinion. Yeah, it can do the job. Not the best knife for batoning, and I guess it's because it's very thin. It's like an axe, if you want something to split good, you have to have a thick axe. And of course, this is not primary for batoning, but uh, for all kind of of task now I try to make some feather stakes. Let's see how it goes with feather stakes. I'm not good at feather sticks, but this is actually a result that is better than most of my tries. And I think it's because of the the blade. Yeah, it's really sharp when I do this, and good as yeah. So for feather stakes, it's perfect. I like it a lot. How about wood carving in general? Yeah. Of course. It's fine. A little bit more details of the sheath. You see the logo. Nice stitching. And yeah. You have this option. I think it's called a dangler. Or you can just put it on your belt. Like this, 
And uh, yeah, I like the closure here. We call these uh, rifle nuts or something like that. Gewehrknapper. I'm not sure why it's called that. I think it's because in the old days they used this for the rifle, the, the straps they had. But uh, yeah, yeah. Let's see. After some use. Well, that worked fine. It's okay. This little knife from Beavercraft, and uh, here's my thoughts about it. It's a good little uh, bushcraft knife. I like it. I like the handle. Uh, the only thing, it's a little bit small. If you got a bigger hand than me, you could probably have uh, a little bit trouble holding it. But for me, it's perfect. Uh, the blade is very thin. You know I like my SC5 and it's really uh, thick in the blade, also my CX, uh, so this is uh, new for me. Uh, yeah, I like the blue or the uh, gun blue or gun black here, I think it looks awesome. I know it will be, uh, it will disappear, but then I just put it on again. Uh, I use that many times and uh, in some of my videos. I'll show uh, how I do it and uh, the things you need for making it uh, black. So yeah, and the sheath is really awesome, good quality, a little bit thin, so it's a it's soft, um, good stitching, good quality, and I like this, the option you can wear it as a dangler hanging or just close to your belt. Um, here are my pros and cons. Uh, I'll start with the cons. Um, it's a little bit short in the handle, so if you have a big hand you may have problem. But for me it's a good grip. Uh, it's a little bit thin in the, um, in the blade and I actually thought it was uh, Scandi grind, but it's not. It's I don't know if you can see it. It has a, I think it's called a secondary belt, but it's sharp down here. So it's very easy to uh, sharpen. But again, I would like to have a Scandi grind. I like that, like my uh, CX. I know the Desi is like this, and it works great. It's not good for betoning, it's very good for feather sticks and other woodworking, uh, woodworking tasks. Um, yeah, I like the matte finish, both the handle, the blade and the sheath. So that's pros and uh, I think I'll wear it and use it in my upcoming videos and test it over a longer period of time and see um, you can see here, there's some screws, so you can actually remove the handles. I don't know if you can buy other handles, uh, but I like this system. It's like easy. You can screw them on or off, and uh, yeah. So all in all, I think it's a good knife, and uh, I know that Beatercraft makes awesome um, carving tools. Uh, very good steel, and I'm sure this one uh, will perform just as good as theirs um, wood carving tools. So uh, go in and check their website out, and uh, of course I put a link to that and to um, Amazon, the place where you can buy this knife.
Yeah, folks, this is all for now. Thank you for watching Kimber Bushcraft. Uh, I hope you find this video interesting with my little review of the uh, bushcraft knife from Beavercraft. And uh, yeah, the things I show you, my little swear stove and so on. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all the help you're giving me uh, so I can reach the, the 100k soon. It's a little bit slow at the moment, but that's how it is. I'll just continue making videos that uh, people would like and uh, share. So I hope you do that. And then I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye bye. Take care.